Hi, the SI Meteorologist, Paul Dorian here. Well, we are rapidly approaching the midpoint of summer. I thought we'd take a look ahead at some possibilities for the upcoming winter, about six months away. There are some very interesting possible clues that can give us an indication, perhaps, of what we can expect this upcoming winter, the winter of 2012-2013. One of the first places to look whenever you're dealing with long-range weather forecasting are the oceans because the oceans store so much heat, the heat capacity of oceans some thousand times greater than that of the atmosphere. So what goes on, what's going on now in the Pacific and the Atlantic can very well play a major role in what to expect six months from now here in the Mid-Atlantic region for the upcoming winter. So let's take a look at the current conditions. These are the sea surface temperature anomalies right now going on throughout the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean. Here's the west coast of South America. And over the past few months, we have had warmer than normal temperatures, sea surface temperatures breaking out here off the west coast of South America. We have transitioned from a La Nina, where temperatures were below normal, now to a neutral condition. And shortly, this will be declared an El Nino. And it looks like the El Nino will continue right through the fall into the winter months, probably in a weak to moderate fashion. Again, these yellows and oranges here represent above normal sea surface temperatures. Now interestingly, it's not just the magnitude of an El Nino that is important for long-range forecasting, for example, for the winter in, in the northeastern part of the U.S. It's also the exact location of the El Nino, whether it'll be eastern-based here right off the South American coast or more of a central base in the tropical Pacific and that is yet to be determined, but that will be something that we'll monitor over the next several months. Now, what else is going on? Well, here in the northern Pacific, we continue to have this colder than normal pattern right here, kind of a horseshoe-shaped colder than normal pattern in the northern Pacific. That has been uh, 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 considered the evolvement of a cold phase of the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. That's an index that NOAA um, uh, calculates to represent the northern Pacific cycle and this is more of a longer range cycle whereas down here in the tropical pacific near the equator is more of a shorter term cycle la ninas and el ninos and this longer term phase a cold or negative pdo started a few years ago and looks like it'll continue for quite a while so that too will be monitored and will play a role in our upcoming weather over the winter now finally up here in the north atlantic we have quite a bit of above normal temperatures, sea surface temperature anomalies, again, showing above normal temperatures here in the North Atlantic. The North Atlantic can be followed through an index called the North Atlantic Oscillation. Last winter, that was largely positive, which contributed to the warmer conditions here throughout much of the eastern U.S. for the winter. And it's probably the toughest of all the ocean cycles to forecast, so that is a wild card for the upcoming winter. A negative NAO or negative North Atlantic Oscillation tends to lead to colder and stormier conditions here in the northeastern part of the U.S. Now one other reason to have some confidence that we will have an El Nino is that there's a whole series of dynamical models that run several months uh, in advance to predict a La Nina versus an El Nino. This is a compilation of all these models here. A whole series of models listed right here that uh, predict what the sea surface temperature anomaly in the tropical Pacific will look like several months in advance. Right here, this zero line represents the dividing line between El Nino on this side and La Nina on this side. And as you can see, our current conditions, we're right around neutral here in this time frame, and the prediction for the next several months is basically a consensus here of a weak to moderate El Nino above the line here. All these models tend to predict a weak to moderate El Nino in the winter months, which by the way is seen right down here, for example, December, January, and February. You see right here uh, quite a few of these models predict something above the neutral line here, so it looks likely that will have an El Nino. What does that mean for the Mid-Atlantic? Well, El Nino winters tend to uh, favor a stronger subtropical jet stream, which tends to form more storms along the East Coast. Last winter, we had La Nina conditions. Very few, if any, true coastal storms rode up right along the East Coast. But El Nino can certainly lead to more precipitation and more storminess along the East Coast. So that's something we'll monitor over the next several months. 
Well, we talked a little bit about precipitation possibilities and maybe some clues about precipitation for the upcoming winter. What about temperatures? Well, a couple different models I've been monitoring lately. One is put out by the U.S. NOAA, and this is called the uh, CFS model, Climate Forecast System. And it has a, kind of a surprising or a significant reversal in temperatures over uh, during the fall from above normal throughout much of the central and eastern part of the country to below normal during the fall. And that change to below normal, according to this model, continues into the upcoming winter months. Here, for example, is the August, September, October prediction. Now, this is uh, surface temperature anomalies. You can see above normal here, in the, right in the heartland of the country, kind of how it's been over the last few months. But then by the latter part of the year, this particular model, CFS model, kind of flips everything and has below normal temperatures here. This is now the October, November, December time frame. Then if we jump ahead to the winter months, December, January, and February, this particular long-range seasonal forecast by this NOAA CFS model has a kind of a scary looking cold pattern here in the northeastern quadrant of the country that continues right here in the next rolling three month period of January, February, and March. So quite a reversal from what to expect by this particular model forecast over the next few months compared to the winter time. Sometime during the fall this model is, is anticipating a reversal in the temperature pattern in the U.S. and much of the U.S. to that of below normal and that continues according to this model in the upcoming winter. Now another completely independent model that I've been following is actually put out by Japan's meteorological agency. It's called the JAMSTEC model. And this is a long-range forecast for surface air temperature anomalies right here for the upcoming winter. This is the latest one from uh, July this month for December through February. And notice it has much of the U.S. colder than normal here for the upcoming winter. So this second model also favors uh, colder than normal temperatures for much of the U.S. for the upcoming winter. These are, of course, long-range models. It's just a very early look at some possibilities. And one of the wild cards that we uh, talked about earlier was the North Atlantic Oscillation. I want to take a look at that right now. This is a tracking of the North Atlantic Oscillation Index over the last several months. It goes all the way back to April. Surprisingly, the last few months, right during the uh, spring and, and or summer months, the NAO has been negative. I say surprisingly because during the winter time it was positive for much of the winter. And sometimes the North Atlantic Oscillation overrides what the Pacific Ocean can do or what the Pacific Ocean may be suggesting will be the uh, result over the uh, uh, several months out. And this is kind of the, uh, a wild card because it's one of the toughest to forecast. We saw earlier a compilation of models that predicts the El Nino or the uh, La Nina out in the tropical Pacific, but there aren't too many models that deal with the North Atlantic. And so we'll have to continue to monitor this. Again, a negative NAO, like it's been over the last few months, would tend to favor colder and stormier conditions in the northeastern U.S. So there are some very interesting clues about the upcoming winter, and we'll continue to monitor that here at the SIweather.com over the next several months. And that's it for now. For the SIweather.com, I'm the SI meteorologist, Paul Dorian.